Okay. Well, well. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cult Greetings Classics Podcast. And salutations. Oh, <laughs> damn it. I a uh, frog in your throat yeah, there? Just yeah, sounded, just, took a drink of water there. Just sounded creepy, boy. That's scary. <laughs> well, but, you know, shouldn't have eaten chocolate <laughs> so right welcome before back, we started. Everybody. Uh, we're still in uh, mid-Halloween here. Well, early in our Halloween <laughs> celebration. Uh, Halfway we're through. Tr- we're going to try to go, you know, a little scary, a little fun, a little scary, a little fun. So we're on our first fun one. And it's uh, I'd say we're on our second. It's our one. second Mel Brooks film, I think we've ever done, right? Yep. No, third. Um, so we've done. Go back and listen to our Robin Hood Men in the Tights. It's probably okay. Robin Hood Men in the Tights. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> go back and listen to our Space in the Balls, <laughs> and then go back and listen to our. Is it? That's it. It will be this. Enjoy week. this, this one. one. Um, we're going to be doing the 1974 film Young Frankenstein. <laughs> An American grandson of the infamous scientist, struggling to prove that his grandfather was not a fucking crazy motherfucker, invited to Transylvania where he discovers the process that reanimates a dead body. Destiny! Destiny! <laughs> um, so this movie's a whole lot of Gene Wilder yelling. If you're really into that scene in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory where he loses his mind, it's essentially that every few lines. From the guy who brought you space balls, blazing saddles, the producers, Dracula Dead and Loving It, Robin Hood Men in Tights, directed by Mel Brooks, starring Gene Wilder, Madeline Kahn, Marty Feldman, Peter Boyle, Cloris Leachman, Kenneth Mars, Richard Hayden, a sneaky Gene Hackman, a sneaky Arthur Mallet. So this is a Mel Brooks parody of the story of Frankenstein. It's a pretty close adaptation to the original Frank, like Universal Hollywood Frankenstein. If you don't know what Young Frankenstein is, go watch it and then watch all of his movies. Young Frankenstein. <laughs> Young Frankenstein. You never use mine, right? <laughs> All right, cast and crew, this one is a Mel Brooks vehicle. Uh, we sort of talked about this before. He's done Spaceballs. I love that movie. Um, also love the producers a lot. Robin Hood, Men in Tights, uh, Blazing Saddles, History you know, of the World, Part 1. I, I don't history. know if we'll do History, history of the World. World's a little forgotten. I was about to say, that, that might one be is forgotten. A that's more classic. like a Jones family classic. Not yeah. to say that it's not because it's, you know, it's Mel Brooks and Mel Brooks, but that one was like resonates more with us. This one I could believe. Uh, this one I believe is written by Gene Wilder and not Mel Brooks, which is kind uh, of it's, a, co- it's co- co- written, written by both of them. Okay. Uh, also from the John, uh, sorry, also from the Mel Brooks uh, family. John Morris did the music. He did all the music for for the other ones. As too, a, lo- so. a lot of with our comedy troops, they typically do keep together. So there are a lot of familiar faces that we're going to see here in the other movies. Familiar faces, familiar sounds. Um, okay, starring Gene Wilder as Froderick Frankenstein. I mean, obviously, also in Blazing Saddles, but uh, I mean, the, what Wonka. I've seen, Willy Wonka is what I've seen him probably the most in, just because I watch it so much as a kid. I just know him from yeah, this Willy Wonka and Blazing Saddles. Yeah, the mostly from Willy Wonka. Obviously. Also, the original producers. Oh yeah, Peter Boyle plays the monster. Everybody loves Raymond. That's all I know him from, and this. So I'm sure he did a lot in between that. Yeah, I kind well, of only on, know, old, know him as like cameos. Also, as an older actor now. I'm not. I mean, I, I don't there's know another a lot of his big work. one. I think Taxi Driver. I have taxi, seen taxi driver, driver, yeah, okay, but, but he obviously can't. didn't resonate with me in that movie. Those aren't his movies. I mean, everybody loves Raymond. He's he's got a big role in there. Um, Igor Igor plays uh, played by Marty Feldman. He had his own TV show called Marty, which he was the he was he has about he's a writer for a lot of TV eyes. stuff in the uh, in the sixties and seventies. It looks like I Monty believe- Python live at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, nice. I believe he died kind of young. He's got crazy eyes. <laughs> yeah, about as crazy as they come. Madeline Kahn plays Elizabeth. Uh, she's come up before. She was in what movie have we done you with her? You can check out Clue. our Clue. Oh, Clue. All right. She's great in that movie as well. She's great in this movie. So much. So much. Flames, flames on the side of the um, I believe she's, she's in also in History of the World. She's and in she's History of the World. She's in um, Blazing Saddles. Also passed away, I believe, young to cancer. So someone else who maybe would have had more work, but... Um, she would have been in, you know, I another know Mel Brooks movie, but she would have made it at least in Dracula Dead and Loving It. Yeah, and it would have been funny. Yeah, whatever her role would have been, would have been great. Yeah, would have been nice. Cloris Leachman plays Frau Blue Hair, who just passed away not too long ago, right? I actually looked a lot of these. A lot of these people like passed away within the past couple years, past yeah. few years. Gene Wilder just, passed this, away a few years ago. It's just that that age group, I guess. Uh, she was in like what was it, Beer Fest? Uh, 
I mean, she's Last done a lot of show. screaming that. She's played kind of the naughty Spanglish, grandma in a lot of things. Jordan. She was in Spanglish. Right she played on. the grandma. I mean, she's been in like this one. Lot. I thought yeah. was uh, fun. Four she Adam plays Sandler the the anti- like the main bad troll in uh, Troll in Central Park. Oh, she there you go. Voice of that. I think she was in Crudes too, possibly. Danny Goldman, not in the movie a lot, but he plays the medical student in the beginning. It kind of gets Gene Wilder. The, the little going. wiener. God, what a wiener. God, I hate that wiener. Not my words, but I'm going to... Yeah, I agree. What a wiener. <laughs> we can talk about that he's guy. He's a right mash. Right? He's, I think he's in like the original Smurfs. He plays the brainy Smurf. Huh. <clears throat> uh, Kenneth Mars plays Inspector Kemp. Great role in this film. I mm-hmm. do love it. Do I know him from anything else? He's Hans Liebkind in the original Producers, which oh, okay. is the Will Ferrell okay. in the remake. That makes sense. <laughs> Does he have an uh, accent? Hey, and he's, tr- he's Triton in The Little Mermaid. Oh. Um, well, there you go. Uh, there's actually there's a few um, few more Mel Brooks people in here. Mr. Hilltop, uh, played by Liam Dunn. He's in Blading, Blazing Saddles and Silent Movie. Um, Arthur Mallet, who plays Toodles in Hook. Wait, he's he in Halloween. In he's Mary Poppins. Who's uh, he in he, this? He's the vill- village elder. You wouldn't recognize him because he's just so much younger and doesn't uh, look like the Arthur Mouth that we know. Okay, that makes um, sense. Nice. Uh, and Gene Hackman plays the blind man, which is fun. Hoosiers. So I mean, well, such a such an odd ca- little cameo. It's a him. fun cameo. I always knew because my mom would always be like, "That's Gene Hackman." Every time that scene popped up, so it's just something I've always known. So I had the reverse. I rewatched this with Megan, and I'm like, "Oh, Gene Hackman's in this." And yeah, mom said I, it like every like, time we watched. This. I think she brought it up. She's like, "Did you know that?" And I go, "No," but I'm sure it was brought up a lot, and I just didn't pay attention. And Cameron has confirmed that it has. Sure did. So apologies to the Jones family. I didn't remember it. Oh, and again, shout out to the Jones family. Gloria Leachman was born in Des Moines, Iowa. Another fact Let's I heard. Let's go. Woo-hoo. I missed it. So cool. Cloris, what a name. Oh, that's about it, though. Cloris nice. Leachman. Uh, again, this is a Mel Brooks movie, so we're probably going to come up with this cast and crew again. So, you know, familiar faces, but we're going to move on to Unverified. Welcome to Unverified, and welcome to the cult classic movie phone. It is December 1974. Oh, another December. That's uh, a popular one. For some reason, everything we're doing. Christmas. Uh, also in theaters at this time, you could see 007, The Man with the Golden Gun. Okay. The Towering Inferno. Okay. Alice Doesn't Love Here Anymore. Losing me. Probably must, supposed to be Dallas doesn't live here anymore. Judge, I'm guessing that's not a correct. <laughs> that's not a correct. Got it. Uh, the Godfather Two is in theater in December this year. Oh, that's a good one. And the Yakuza. And just because I don't know okay. much about the '70s off the top of my head, we're a few years away from the Summer of Sam. The Summer of Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it was 1977. I looked it up. I'm like, there's a chance that it just happened, but it, it wasn't. It wasn't. You can go freely about yourself. I guess I was New York though, so I don't know. <laughs> You guys notice that Mel Brooks isn't in the movie, right? And we all assumed he should be. Yeah. Well, the reason was Gene Hackman... Wilder. <laughs> couple of genes. Couple of genes. Couple of genes. Yeah. So Gene Wilder... Um, Pair of genes. That's nice denim. High-waisted, a little flared at the bottom. <laughs> we're in 1974. Let's go. Um, Gene Wilder convinced... Mel Brooks not to be in the movie, do a cameo like he does in most of his other movies. So he, he oh Jesus Christ, I'm gonna have to talk, aren't I? <laughs> um, the reason Gene Wilder did that was um, he didn't think audiences would buy the credibility of the movie anymore if they saw Mel Brooks in it being all goofy. How credible in no, like everyone's goofy. That, that I don't know if I like that. I, I wanted to see a little Mel Brooks I, character come, like a villager, come in and, and make me laugh. I yeah. hate it. I saw four roles that should have been Mel Brooks. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Like wherever you want to put him, put him he in. He still there. snuck in with a couple. I think he was he's like a screeching cat, which wildly good <laughs> cat noise. His hands made it in too. He was okay. the hands okay, pouring the nice. soup uh, in the, the blind man scene. <laughs> okay. Uh, but a lot of but the, a lot of his, his hands and things like that were necessity. But the cat was just improvised, and that was I mean that was funny, it's fucking hilarious. R- real quick, it yeah, seems yeah. it seems just like Gene uh, Gene Wilder and Mel Brooks. Just since Gene was the writer, uh, it seemed like they didn't necessarily butt heads a lot. But the, it, like Gene had a lot of creative uh, influence on the movie, which is surprising for a Mel Brooks film. I think they collaborated writing, and the one thing that disappoints me again, and this is Gene Wilder being, I guess, a stingy asshole. Rest in peace. Um, <laughs> So, as they were writing, Gene Wilder let Mel Brooks write as many 
scenes as he wanted, and then he's like, now we're going to take that down by 10% because it's too goofy. Doesn't that suck? Yeah. Well, I mean, still one of my favorites, though, so, I mean, still. No, sort no, of on no. that same, I heard, I heard the movie was, like, twice as long, and they had to, like. Yeah, well, actually, this is an interesting is... one, which kind of comes into some <clears> questions <throat> and things, animosities I have later, but they just shot a bunch of gimmicks and jokes, and they, essentially in the editing room, they were like, it's unwatchable, and about only a third of the jokes worked. So they said they cut just two thirds of the jokes out, kept the ones that did work, and that's what's left in the movie. So that's a little bit why I might see like scenes are jumpy, or well, one it's a comedy, so it doesn't really matter too much, and it's a parody. But why why some plot might be a little loose? Uh, Mel Brooks and the cast they had so much fun uh, just shooting the movie that um, Mel essentially made the movie longer, just to keep they just kept shooting, just shooting. Keep just, out yeah, them. just to keep. Which Warner Brothers will keep giving us money as long as we stay on set. Was, they had cut a bunch of shit after it, so it didn't really matter. But uh, I have it written somewhere. Uh, Mel Brooks considers this the best film he ever directed, uh, but it was number three amongst his funniest after Blazing Saddles and The Producers. He thought were his best movies. Gene says this is his favorite movie he's ever been in. Interesting. I would agree with it. It was probably really fun. Willy Wonka. Movie. Come on, Gene. Yeah, but you got to deal with kids. bunch of kids, bunch nah. of fucking kids. Yeah, he got to probably let loose a little more on this one. You're right. Uh, this is something I always just remembered, but uh, this is pretty cool. They're using the exact same Frankenstein lightning effects that was in the original Frankenstein. Uh, Mel Brooks discovered that Ken Strickfaden, uh, who made the original machinery, had just kept it in his garage all this time and he still had it. So he reached out to him and he set up the exact same setup as the original Frankenstein. It's the exact same effects. That's fucking sweet. I rewatched it. Just a couple scenes from the original, just to comparing mm-hmm. contrast. It's like shot for shot. Yeah, it's really? I mean, outside much the, the jokes, the setup, the like logistical like framing, it's the same fucking movie. That's when was the first one shot? When was the original shot? Thirty three. Damn, 30s, really? Yeah. So like, because the original horror ones were forty years. 30s, he just 40s. had that chilling in his garage, like, collecting dust. I guarantee you, whoever he lived with is like, you can get rid of that shit. For 40 years. <laughs> his like, neighbors no. think he's like making meth in his fucking garage. <laughs> this one's fun. Gene Hackman learned about the film through his frequent tennis partner, Gene Wilder, and requested a role because he wanted to try comedy. Um, and he volunteered to play this blind guy. It was only four, four days of shooting, but that's kind of fun. That he's- uh, <laughs> On top of that, I guess the line at the end where Gene Hackman says, I was going to make espresso, was improvised and it made the crew laugh so hard that that's why it's a sudden cut because the laughter cuts in. Nice. Speaking of that, I guess Gene Wilder was... Just would always break during his scenes. That this is according to Cloris Leachman. Um, so they had to like redo. They had to like do fifteen takes of each sort of bit, which oh, would have been kind of funny to see. I, they don't. They didn't really do bloopers back then. I don't think. We, there, we, had, we had a DVD version where there was a, really? some behind the scenes oh, stuff. Oh, nice. Yeah, it see, wasn't exactly fun. bloopers, but it was like just some like behind the scenes filming when they were dancing and stuff. Uh, so if you guys I'm have a, a DVD, for some know. bloopers. Pretty sure this does have like some special feature things. Yeah, I missed uh, the end of the, the credit bloopers. Yeah, me too. Uh, this is kind of funny, but uh, Igor's, Igor's shifting hump, uh, <laughs> that was actually just like an ad-lib gag because Marty Feldman throughout shooting kept just shifting it around, <laughs> like the hump around. So uh, the, the DR, the, <clears throat> they, they just noticed several days in the film and they're like, oh shit, well, let's work with it then. Oh, like he, it just, he, he didn't intentionally switch it, but once I realized that the continuity errors, yeah, they, like, they, well, they played into it. Yeah. That to me felt like one of the biggest. Like, yeah, Mel payoff. Bro- yeah. Well, not just payoffs, but doesn't that seem? I mean, I feel like Mel Brooks. We got the mole. Yeah, in yeah. Rob- I mean, like they, he used joke. it again for sure, but it's it was Marty. Funny enough, the Marty walk this way. It. Mel Brooks thought this that is was my, this is my favorite one. I think <laughs> that we've ever done. The joke? The joke? No, no, favorite unverified that we've ever oh, ever mentioned. Mel Brooks thought it was too hacky. To oh no, you're not going to say it. I'll piggyback Mel, off it. Mel Brooks was going to didn't like the walk this way. He thought it was too hacky, but it just tested so well. And when they kept it in for the test audiences, that he put it into all of his movies after that. It's kind of a, it's in way. every single movie, yeah. pretty much, right? Mm-hmm. And a, it kill, it works. Every it works. Time. It so works. right off the walk this way, Aerosmith took a break from a long night of writing. Oh yeah, this one is crazy. Writing and recording to see this film. Steven Tyler wrote the band's hit Walk This Way the morning after seeing the movie inspired by Marty Feldman's first scene, <laughs> The true? Walk This yeah. Way. I um, mean, that's insane. Unverified, but apparently way. Aerosmith walked this way is because of this movie. Do you ever get the vibe that Steven Tyler's a liar? Yep. Me too. <laughs> I, I mean, like, it's I a mean, good story. Just, good story. That could be just a t- I mean, sometimes you just need to, you know, take a break and inspiration comes from a lot of different places. I trust no one with that many scarves. It's always been my <laughs> life stance and I'm sticking with it. This, this one seems wrong. The skulls that Freddie and Inga find under the castle were real, except for the one that says six months dead. But some of those had some meat on it. 
Like, yeah, like the one you're dead. Like that. Yeah. Had, that had a little bit of little bit of meat on there. Yeah, apparently those were real, but I maybe they're just saying the skull was real, but not either any, way. We can just do that. We need use I, human yeah. skulls. I, mean, I mean, all skull, all of those old ones used to be like real skeletons. So yeah, yeah, weird. I don't know. Well, someone look into that one, but that one seems weird. But I found it on hit us up. Let IMDb. us know. Um, I looked at them. I'm like, these aren't real, but they are. So what the hell do I know? In the commentary for Spaceballs, Mel Brook mentions that uh, when Gene Wilder came uh, in for casting for Blazing Saddles, he requested that the next movie he does, uh, that he wanted it to be his idea, Gene's idea, and it turned out to be this one. So, hmm. so another thing that Gene, in this passion project of his, pushed, um, it's in black and white, and the original production company, once they saw, they like, we don't want a black and white movie. But Gene Wilder thought that they wouldn't buy that it was... 1930s yeah right Transylvania or whatever if they saw a green Frankenstein that we've all grown accustomed to because mm-hmm. it would just look like a Halloween costume and I agree with Gene on this one it just plays better black well even on off that like the the studio even said how about this how about you film it in color because we want to show it overseas there were a few uh, there's a country that like they're just getting color and we want to like debut it still there and Mel Brooks said bullshit you're just gonna like blackball me you're gonna Mm -hmm. just put this out in color because we'll have it so he made sure that they just didn't shoot in color funny enough though they still I think they still painted uh painted him green they painted him green just for the visuals It, it made the contrast of of the skin look I'm better. sure he's like, do we really have to do this? And they're like, yes, we <laughs> yes. do. Fuck, uh, it's going to be black and white. You're still going to pay my Also, the scene when they light up the monster. I mean, that, that I've just famously heard. Just the, It was a fiberglass mold of uh, Peter Boyle that they actually like lit up. And it was a, an elaborate effect they did for that. But I don't really know what this means, but the zero and the 20th Century Fox logo at the beginning is slightly tilted, which has been used by Fox on several occasions, including the opening for Star Wars... Episode four, A New Hope. Interesting. I don't really know why what to do with that information. Well, that seems like some sneaky Illuminati, uh, Freemason, just hidden code stuff you know, uh, right in front of us. It seems like if they knew it was tilted, maybe. Just in case you're interested, Peter Doyle's Boyle is who plays um, the monster. Mm-hmm. Six foot two, so you know. Okay, I mean, I mean, he's not a short freak. guy. Freak. <laughs> but they did pretty well. I, I mean, obviously lifts freak. and stuff like that. <laughs> Just in case you're wondering, if you watch the movie, you're like, I wonder how tall Peter Doyle is. And I did. He was wearing platform shoes clearly throughout the whole thing. But But what I'm saying is he's still a big frame guy. Yeah. Uh, This one did have a lot of fun facts, though, that I just did stop reading at a point. But also, I do remember there being some sort of special feature. So if you know where that's at, hit us up. Uh, I'd like to watch that. Yeah. yeah, We're going to move on to questions. Comments. Animosities. The first thing I wrote down as my first note wasn't animosity. It's a long intro. It's a real long intro before we get in. And even when we get in, it's a long pan to get to the story. So I did rewatch just a couple here and there. Um, the original Frankenstein. It's mm. pretty consistent with that. Like, really? They kind of. I've never seen it. I hadn't. I hadn't seen it except for the you know reanimation scene. Mm-hmm. But that that actually follows pretty descript how the original movie opens up funny enough i've seen original dracula i've seen the mummy but i haven't seen uh i've even seen some of the wolfman but i haven't seen uh i've seen bits of the wolfman i actually this movie made me want to go back so here's a question this is our halloween episode mm-hmm. is this a halloween movie can you watch it at halloween it always has you been asked a... two different questions there let me, okay. let me let's answer Sorry. the first one is this a halloween movie I don't it think kind so. Of, it's always a soft lead up for me. It's not near Halloween, but it's like September. It's September for me usually. But that's sort of the answer to the second question that you had. Can you watch it around Halloween? The answer yeah, is completely yeah. yes. yes. But is it a Halloween movie? No. I don't think so. Not necessarily. I agree with that. Not a Halloween movie. Well, here's You can watch it leading up. This is what did... I, I going into this, I was, I was you know, prior to rewatching it for the pod. Mm-hmm. I'm like, eh, this isn't even going to give me any Halloween movie feels it's just gonna be you know a mel brooks movie but i will say it gave me a little bit you got the lightning you got the fog you got the, the only thing light, that does hurt it for that argument is i could watch this in the heat of summer oh and yeah 100 percent. well here's the thing i'll say enjoy anything that's classic hollywood universal monsters is the epitome of halloween like the mummy frankenstein like dracula so any any subject matter dealing with that is very halloween no matter sure. what so yeah like as much as this movie necessarily isn't as much yeah, the original monster movies, I think, are for sure. Yeah. But I, to Mark's point, like, I could watch this 
Just about any time of the year, if I was, yeah, if it's I was in a Mel Because it's a movie. comedy, because yeah. it's not a scary movie. Yeah. No, but I do think the tropes of the original Frankenstein movie, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm on a little bit of a Halloween mood now. Nice. Let us know what you think out there, if you agree or disagree with us. But if you disagree with us, be kind. <laughs> uh, a, a legitimate question, just about some of the dates here. Okay, so Victor Frankenstein is Frederick Frankenstein's... <laughs> Great grandfather. Road. Yes. Why are they just now getting him a will? Did they have to dig up that body, or is his coffin just not been buried yet? Because they're like, we need to find the next living heir. Like, what? What was the holdup that the, his dad didn't get the will? Or I um well maybe so I don't have the answer That's to this, question. but maybe it's because it seems like um it's very confused. The great grandpa wrote out the the son and he's like this is has to skip a generation no no but like he was his his reputation well, not, not situation his rep, reputation was tarnished right and he was embarrassed by the scientific community so maybe gene's dad and him were like we're we, we don't get along okay okay so it just took that long for him to get hunted down as far as in the movie the body, i have no why, idea did they dig up the body or is that whole time just the coffin been waiting until they can i thought he just died <laughs> The body looks pretty, uh, pretty dried out. So who who invited in there? Was it that guy sitting in on his lecture? Yeah, yeah, it was the That's, guy yeah, who had the will. He's on the, yeah, speaking on behalf of the estate. Just the, seems weird. And also on top of that, if Frau Blucher was the girlfriend, how old is she? I thought she was the. Was she the girlfriend of the grandpa? Or, yeah, okay. he was my boyfriend. I, I actually had to rewatch that the scene that you're talking about, Jordan, the guy who's sitting in on the class and yeah. tells him about like you, you know. He's got plans for you or whatever. It just it doesn't really explain anything. He just gets on a train. Yeah. Oh, and I do love that a train just takes you to Transylvania. And also, <laughs> it seems like his wife can just drive a car there too, which is nice. Um. Yeah. I I, I, I was confused the, about the getting. Like, if you inherit a house, do you have to move there and live there? But like, just sell I would, it. If you're getting the castle, I mean, yeah. Ooh, then again, I always see those deals that are castle. like moved to Italy for a dollar and just fix up this little, you know, village, village cottage. Well, I guess he didn't get it with terms or whatever. Um. I don't know. Yeah. I kind of forgot how this movie started and how he got there. And I'm like, oh yeah. I'll tell well, you he, what. I'm failing that wiener student at the beginning. Oh yeah. I thought he was gonna get punched or something. If that's such a good scene though when when he gets so mad he actually stabs his leg with the scalpel and then just casually crosses his leg. That's such a Mel Brooks like Yeah, that actually did it. I, I really do enjoy that joke. Uh, <laughs> I wanted a, a sound effect with it, like a little more, but it wasn't quite Well you get that with the old man getting hit in the balls. That's where you get that. Little... Wanna talk about that old man. Is that about as frail as they come? Yeah. That guy has gotta be sixty pounds. He could have been one of the old people in the bed and with, with Charlie and Charlie in the chocolate factory. Yeah, and you would have believed that he hadn't walked in ten years. Um you gotta give him more than a dollar for that. <laughs> give him an extra, give him an extra dollar. dollar. Okay. Actually this this may not be make the podcast because this is a real question. When is the movie supposed to be set in? Is it 1974 or is it in the like 30s? Because that for classroom him, it's the 70s in Germany or Transylvania, they're still in the 30s. They're still in the 1890s. Yeah, they haven't quite caught up yet. I couldn't tell because that classroom was mad 70s. You, 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 I mean, oh yeah, just mad 70s. I mean, Gene Wilder's hair has always kind of just been crazy. Can we talk 70s? about that? What is, what is it? What is it? Is it a comb over? Is it just curly, a style? It's, it can't, just, it's not just curly. There's a lot going on. You've seen like the. Who's that fucking guy from uh, the Last Dance uh, documentary who like kind of winks at Michael after the? He's like a security guard. Yes, the security oh. guard with like the Jerry curl like. Yes, thing? but yes. this is this is this is a Jerry. Well, it's not Jerry curl, but he's got long hair, moldy. But it feels like a comb over in the middle of it. But I've seen him in other movies where he doesn't have a comb over. He has curly hair, and this is this predates those. What's just trying to slick it back, but when it's that poofy, it just turns into that, maybe? I mean, this guy here. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, that's the security guard. He lost his life savings to Michael Jordan in quarters. Yeah? That guy. Well, no, well, but it seemed like it. Um, okay, so, I mean, it just is what it is. But it is not a comb-over is really all I want to get at. Yeah, it's weird. It's definitely odd. And uh, it's not in every movie. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's odd in this movie even more so. And does it add... Yes, I think it does. Okay, well, I, I'm for it. In the end, it's a positive. Interesting, interesting turn. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I think oh. it's all right. Uh, just question, you guys. Just what are some of your favorite bits in the movie? Uh, I mean, obviously, we've said the walk this way. That's classic. That made its way. It got Aerosmith into a song and worked into all the other movies. There's a lot of kind of, I don't want to say silly, stupid, dumb, dad yeah. jokey puns like the 
Oh, do you want to have a roll in the hay? Well, actually, let's rolling, talk about other sexual rolling, rolling. Well, actually, let's talk about that for a second. Because interestingly enough, when Jordan and I were coming in, we were saying this this viewing did hit a little different just because I've seen it so many times where, like, I do love this movie and I think it's hilarious, but I didn't laugh at this viewing as much as I have in the past just because, I don't know, it's like viewing number the tone and the, the tone and the pace of this play is a lot closer to the the real movie in mm-hmm. a negative way. I wish they would have handed up a little bit more to keep it moving. So do you think it's do you think it's the fact that it's kind of based on a true story that there there's a there is a lot of story and plot that they're trying to get through? No, that, I don't think so. Because they do the same thing with Dracula Dead and Loving It where it's almost a straight well, think parody, about all but of, it's all of those are pretty much parodies yeah. in some way. This sure. is probably the closest adaptation, but mm-hmm. like you said, Dracula is I mean Robin Hood Men in Tights is pretty close too. And space but do you think like a like a Blazing Saddles or the producers where you can kind of just make You're his own story up? You're less but... than a genre and more of a specific movie that slows it up. I think it's just earlier in his work and he didn't have as much free range as he wanted. Well, it Mel sounds Brooks like they just it. also shot a, a we already know a shit ton and just cut it down into. I think because I do have some like just question animosity like like there's just a moment where like the town is already angry that like. Dr. Frankenstein's there and they want to like storm and nothing's happened yet. It does seem like there are just some scenes that just seem out of place and there's no causality for it. A lot of times though, when you see a movie, a comedy like this and they cut 10 scenes, you're like, that makes sense. Yeah. That, 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 is, that is the workaround with all. It's a sure. comedy. It's a parody. And they're just taking what scenes they want. Trying to, to keep it under so. two hours. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, so, I, I mean, mean that really oh, is the explanation for that. But I do. Honestly, that's a great four minute boner joke, but we're going to cut that one. <laughs> Um, so I mean, there are just dumb things like that. That this is a comedy, so it's easily explained away. But there are just some plot and storyline. It, story is, it is weird, though, to your point about this movie, Cameron. I do just remember the highlights. The it's alive, and right. then the you the know the bookcase scene, scene. And, the and it's like this way. honestly, I'll, back to what I said though. I think my favorite bit is the Frau Bluka, <laughs> like that, oh, the horse name. Yeah. I just like it because they don't quit. They yeah. do not quit that joke, and it just wins you over eventually. I like when it's like towards the end of the movie, she comes in and they they say her name, horse. Name. <laughs> that, that's the one that gets me, like the the last one, the, like the eighth one. I love when Marty uh, Feldman comes back out and just goes, "Blue guy." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that's the best part yeah. of the joke for me. There's a couple silly ones that I uh, like the the um, the door knockers. What knockers? <laughs> I said knockers. Oh, thank you, doctor. <laughs> or the the elevate me right now. Let's start using that. Elevate, elevate, me. elevate me right now, right There's here. The yeah, she's... said to give, said to give, said to give. <laughs> oh, and then he co- then um, I think uh, Igor's getting strangled by by Frankenstein, and she's like, okay, three syllables, <laughs> and it starts over again. Yeah, I love it. Uh, uh, I always like the darts one with the inspector when I was just, a kid, just because he che- <laughs> yeah, and it's, we get the Mel Brooks cat it, thing. It's and not help, necessarily you know like one joke, but his character, just like the whole arm thing. I don't know if that's an homage to anything, so I apologize out there. But that character in general, his bit, the yeah, that's fun. Like the pops of it, that always got me. It still did. Even with the the more uh, with the dart scene, you get. Like sort of the last final punchline when he's driving away and there's darts it's in his tire. Like, <laughs> like ten times the amount of darts than they have actually thrown, though. By the way, um, I still like the bookcase scene. It's a classic. Bookcase yeah, scene is so classic. Like, Maybe I, just, my I just can't when hate you're watching on it. Big Daddy. That's the scene they show you. Yeah. like you know, Young Frankenstein. Yeah, it's just it almost feels like even for Mel Brooks, like ahead of his time, it feels like a Marx Brothers scene. It's just a classic comedy scene. Yeah, you know I agree with that. So, so I, that I, might I, be the I think winner. iconically, that's my favorite. Still, the blooker is my favorite word joke. I mean physical comedy it's yeah the bookcase oh you know what got me this time that didn't always get me and i don't know exactly what they sing but when frankenstein first has sex with um um his madeline ex-fiance Con. madeline Con, when she's like oh but then they bring it back later on when jude milder like they cross mode i kind of wish there was a little more madeline Con. i don't know if they could give her giving her a bigger role or or if elizabeth was just more prominent because funny enough originally she was supposed to play uh inga but she <sighs> but elizabeth Con said i'd rather play the elizabeth role oh, Ma- madeline Con. madeline um, Con, sorry madeline Con said she would rather play the just elizabeth just role. uh her her and gene wilder at the train station at the beginning is so funny she's like oh freddie darling how can i say in a minute what has taken me lifetime to understand taffeta won't you try all right <laughs> that, <laughs> that, seemed, that is awesome that all scene kills and all like the shout out like the the way the they shot them it just looks like a classic scene uh, it really does like it, aesthetically i think that's what's so great about parodies like this and then as far as we go to like the, the right movies detail. they really just make the genre movie yeah. and then add jokes into it 
and still have the story, but that scene is... This cool. part, too, when like we first get introduced to the creature coming alive, and you can hear him in the background, mm. <laughs> you're like, oh, you, you like it, huh? You just made a yummy sound. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> no, yes, I you did. did. You, you made, made a, a yummy, yummy sound. sound. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, fuck. Uh, the put on the Ritz, you know, this, it is kind of funny. I was walking in on Mark after the scene, but it is funny when Gene Wilder just starts dancing. And he's like, come on. <laughs> come on. Yeah, he's trying to get it <laughs> going again. <laughs> uh, honestly, we have talked about it, but the Gene Hackman blind man scene is pretty funny. Oh, yeah. We, Cigars. That... The way he says that's always gotten me to laugh a little. Yeah, the cigar. Yes. Cigars. <laughs> Next time I'm at like a wedding or like a bachelor party, birthday party, and someone brings out cigars, that I'm doing that. <laughs> cigars. Well, I mean, a shout out to our mom. I feel like she always quotes the "I was gonna make espresso," uh, but I mean, for granted, he. But Peter like Boyle first... is really funny in that too when he's holding his bowl and he's like, "Oh," oh and he's like, you know, he's playing it as the the monster Frankenstein, but it's funny. Oh, I do want to say that whole brain scene. I I just assumed because I hadn't, I actually hadn't watched the original Frankenstein. I read, you know, like I said many times. Already. Is there a brain specific? <laughs> Specifically that he gets an abnormal brain and he drops the normal brain. So I'm I I just oh. assumed that was his name was Abby. Abby Abby, Abby, Abby normal. normal. Well, that's nothing like the original novel, but whatever. <laughs> um. Oh, you read? Do you? I read half of it. <laughs> that's good enough for me. Sure is. Questions, comments is always tough in movies like this, just because yeah. there there aren't a lot, so it always turns into a little bit of a quote fest. But yeah, I mean, but, but that's, that's a what you want for, sometimes. That's yeah. what we in want a movie to. like this, here's a comment yeah, for this. So it is fun to watch it this one and see how many tropes and jokes continue throughout Mel Brooks's work. It's like we're gonna do the walk this way, we're gonna do the hump thing. Go back and listen to it early in this episode if you want to hear my points. Uh, kind of just an animosity when after Doctor Frank Frankenstein just immediately turns and admits he is a Frankenstein destiny destiny. Mm-hmm. Um, the next morning when they're having breakfast destiny! And, and they're just describing how big he's gonna have to be. <laughs> when Igor just draws a picture, draws a picture, <laughs> he's like, you know what? I think that's our man. <laughs> what do you mean? You still just took the first dead body yeah, from no. town, like. That has nothing to do with that picture that he just made. Oh, they made a dick joke in there, like obviously. You would have an enormous von Stuka. He's like, well, yes, of course. Well, that goes without saying. <laughs> that goes without saying. Um, did that corpse have a big dick, or did they have to like go find a dick? Well, that's what I'm saying. It seems like they just took a big body and they didn't do any of the expanding that he was talking about. Where I mean, I believe Frankenstein. Is the put, buns of a dancer. Yeah, he's put together of many the different legs corpses. Of a guy from the opening scene. See, uh, Franken Thumb from the Thumb movies from Steve Odenkirk. Um, not to be confused <laughs> with Bob Odenkirk. We've gone over this again, but uh, I just wanted you guys to bring up. Thumb. What is it called? Yeah, Frank, Frank and Thumb. Thumb. It's a it's good one. Series. It's a good one. If uh, you know, also, you should... a pretty straight parody of the Frankenstein stories. Nice. Does Frau live in the castle? Yeah. Because why are they always? Why is it so weird that they're finding like evidence of her around? You know what I mean? Like, huh. it seems like she should almost be part part of the team a little more. Um, Granted, she's a little scary. Yeah, I guess she's scary. <laughs> in another movie, she'd Luca. be a ghost. Um, I like that she smokes cigars. <laughs> yeah. Well, when she's like playing the violin, walking up the steps. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Her line of "He was my boyfriend" actually is pretty. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'll say it. he was my boyfriend. Uh, uh, she's funny too. Um, I'm sure she has a lot of cut scenes as well. This is just a trickle down from unverified, but how they Gene Wilder kept breaking and it took a lot uh, to get shots. The shot they had to redo the most is when Marty Feldman was first meeting Elizabeth when she was coming in and he bites her uh, her <laughs> fur. Apparently he kept coming up with tufts of fur in his teeth and people, <laughs> and they couldn't stop laughing. So they had to get a shot from I go, Could you get the bags? Sure, you take the blood. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. when they're going through the skulls and he's the last face. It's hey, like, ain't got no bite. I really don't want this to be a quote fest, but the, the werewolf. Werewolf? Their wolf. And he's like, why are you talking like that? I don't know, I'm easy. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that one. <laughs> This is a movie that we do love, but it's just something we've seen so many times that we're coming at it with a little more critical eye than we usually would, where it's usually, it's a comfort watch. It's just a nostalgic watch. I and don't again, m- we're just remembering the highlights, not the way the movie plays. So it's like, oh yeah, I guess they have, you know, plot and scenes in between. It's almost two hours, but it is an easy watch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, should we move on to recasting? Recasting. Recasting. Recasting, yeah, this one was kind of hard again because this is a nostalgic movie that we love. It it's hard to you know reclass these these classic movies for us. Uh, who do you want to start with? Someone someone near the bottom. Let's start with uh, Inspector Kemp. If anybody had one, I have like three options here. Okay. Jordan, you go first. I'm gonna take mine. Um 
Because Mel Brooks isn't in this movie, I thought this would be the funnest Mel Brooks cameo. So that's what I'd like to see. I okay. agree. Damn, that, actually, that's a good idea to put put Mel Brooks somewhere. So actually, it was a cop out a little bit. That's my third one. I do have Mel Brooks written down that this would kind of be my, the perfect cameo for him in the movie. Because it's a big enough role, but it's, not, like, it's not too intrusive. Um, I did, and, and it's, just because you have three. I, I did John C. Riley. Oh, just that's a good one. I don't know, just a goofy no, John no, C. Riley. No, that's good for sure. Um, just working off that, how, what about, uh, this isn't one of mine, but oh, also has initials. He's passed away. Philip Seymour Hoffman? Philip Seymour Hoffman? Um, no, that's just a wild card. Sorry. I'm, 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 I'm so there's a couple of people. I think Philip Seymour Hoffman can do most things. Here is my first one, and it's a wild card, but Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I, I get it. Sure. I get but it. then I thought of this one. I forget his name, but from what? Modern, but the dad from Modern Family, Ty something. Oh. Uh, oh. What, what do you guys like out of mind? Do you like Nicolas Cage or do you like the like Ty your, guy from Modern I Family? I like your Nicolas Cage the best. I like. But I think Mel Brooks probably plays. Yeah, I, I, I like, like Ty the best because it seems like it should be a character. I keep actor. thinking it's yeah. Ty Pennington, but it's definitely not him. No, what is, what is that guy's the father from Modern Family? Burrell. Ty Burrell. Ty Burrell. That's right. I, Ty Burrell. Okay, let's go Nicholas Cage for me, but uh, definitely Mel Brooks wins the round. Uh, who else do you want to do? Who did you guys do the monster? Yeah, yeah. Who'd you do? Jack Nicholson. Okay, Ooh, that's fun. And I don't know how well that plays. But I, to, feel like I believe he's a little man, and we're gonna definitely have to prop him up. Yeah, well, he's got the. Platform I don't think he's shoes. little. Five ten's not little. Five ten's not little. It's hey, fine. Jack it's Nicholson. Fine. That's what Jack fine. Nicholson is. Yeah, it's probably. He might even be like six foot. I think he's a little man. I I don't five think four. So. Well, Sorry, what do you Joe, think if you're listening list? to this. No, no. I think Jack Nicholas is... No, I think he's even average. I'm like, not talking the golfer. No, I know. But I'm just saying, I think both are of average size. Jack Nicholas. Uh, I club. did Bill Fagerbacky. 5'10". That's not little. Okay. That's, that's not, not little. little. That's not that was a little. smaller than that. Okay. But I did Bill Fagerbacky. Uh, you would know him from Coach. He's the he's okay. also yeah. the voice of Patrick. He's the voice of Patrick from M O O N. That's, that's pr- I, I love that, actually. He's got a big face. Like, he's just kind of... Yeah, it works... Oh no! I know exactly who he was. Um, he's in the running for any big simpleton. I love that. <laughs> um, mine is David Harper from Stranger Things. He's the sheriff. okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good too. I like that. Damn, those are good. Big did burly you go? guy. Got the I, I, did, I did Jack Nicholson. Oh right, right. Blindman. I didn't. I actually didn't do no? uh, the Gene Hackman one. Oh, did you guys I, have? I did not. No, no, I, I did Bill Murray. Oh yeah, oh, that'd, be, like that'd be that. fun. How about, I did Billy Crystal. Okay. Now so, I want to come so up with So that, that that's a perfect Mel Brooks. Well, role, yeah, like you could have put cameo. him there that's too, a cameo for spot. sure. And then again, that's just I believe what Billy Crystal was doing in uh Princess Princess Bride. Uh, Elizabeth. Uh, okay, Elizabeth. Uh I've done a recasting for this before, Catherine O'Hara. Jinx. It's just the perfect one. I, I thought her, that's I where I wanted two, to see I had her too, but hold on, hold on. I've there, done I've done those two before, Just I think. so just so there's another one in here. Um Fuck. It was Catherine O'Hare, though. It's just... I, everybody thought that, though, right? It would have been great. Let's uh, do Frau Blue Hair. Uh, I love mine. Megan Cavanaugh. She's Marla Hooch from um, A League of Their Own. Go check out Jesus. our League of Their Own. Uh, oh. She's Marla Hooch. Listen to own. our. But she also fuck. plays the Frau Blue Hair role pretty much in Robin Hood <laughs> yeah. Men in Tights and in um, Dracula Dead and Loving It as the like German caretaker. So she does this in Mel Brooks movies later. So I'm just That's speeding great. up the process. That's great. I actually think I have a good one for this. I think and I, have I good normally one too. Was, all right. So I'll go first because mine probably isn't good. Jane Lynch. Mine's like, Jane Lynch, oh, too. Okay. Oh, nice. High five. Cool. Nice. Just no, feels like, like a good Jane Lynch role. It's a role. great Jane Lynch role. She, she would nail this. Mine's cheating because she does she go did, on to you do it, about so, it. Yeah. But whatever. Who do you have as Inga? I'm not a huge fan of mine. This one actually was tough for me. I don't know why. Just yeah, me too. Inga was kind of neither here nor there for me. The actress plays it well. It's just they don't give the character much to sure. do. You know, she's just a sexual innuendo joke. I've done this before, so it's kind of a throwaway, but Elizabeth Banks. That's what I did, too, to throw it away. We're all throwing it away. Well, Mark, you I throw it away? thought of that, and I, I had to come up with someone different, so I didn't <laughs> write that down. I did January Jones. Oh, I actually disagree with that. I think she's the worst actress in the world. She's a little emotionless, for sure. But I get where you're coming from. I'm not insulting you. This no. is not an insult of your choice. It's just it's an insult to Jane Lynch. Insult my choice. It's fine. She's just bad. But yeah, we all. Kind I of don't did. like mine for sure. This was a hard one for me. I don't know. Her <clears throat> doppelganger is Nikki Glaser, though. Okay, so I truly did think. I of did that. think about a comedian, but she her voice is so nasally and just I don't I don't see her doing the accent. Okay, uh, so let us know what we missed and who'd you have some of that? Igor. Okay, Sorry, that, Steve. 
<sighs> Sorry, right, Steve. We all did it's it. all it. Steve Buscemi. Yeah, yeah I, I did. Sorry, I did Jolo. Steve. I did Jolo Truglio. Or Truglio. <laughs> Uh, he's from Brooklyn Nine Nine. He's from That's Super Bad. Bad. Yeah, you know, you know who he is. Uh, I like. I, I did Steve Gollum. Buscemi as well. Just because. If, we, if we were doing the Trinity, this is I, where Andy did, I did would go. I didn't think oh, he'd I be great. It's it just looks based. Come on, Steve. Sorry. Uh, I believe we're on to Friedrich Fro- Frankenstein. If you're ready. Can anybody have a good one? I gave a throwaway sucky one. Can I, I say this it? was pretty hard? I mean, I want a different troop. I want Will Ferrell. Okay. He yells a lot. That's the only That reason. could be interesting. It's definitely, yeah, it's going to be a little more over fun. the top. It's not it's not as bad. Be, yeah. I really I have tried three to, written down. Uh, I'd love to hear him. I did Jim Carrey. It's going to be wicked different, but it's just going to be his interpretation of extreme and then just pen, quiet, you know? This is what I, I, when I was thinking about this, this is what is so impressive about Gene Wilder. He is his own unique thing that's not comparable. Is it straight up comedy? No. Is it weird? Like theater and comedy. Yeah, like, it, it's. Okay, I have a weird which one. Which kind of brings these two to the table. Either John Cleese or Eric Idle. I like the, the John Monty Python. Oh, yeah, that would yeah, that yeah, yeah. John Cleese feels. It has to have a bit of a weird cheekiness to it, almost, and like a wink inside. What about "Don't Make Me Laugh"? Uh, Tim Curry. Uh, so I truly did think about that, but he's like, I don't. He's got his own thing too. Give me that Tim Curry laugh you do so well. <laughs> I was like, that's all right. that's pretty good. I hope he. I hope he practices. Cause I hope he listens. Pays off. Inclusion. I mean, this one's tough though. Again, childhood classic. It's hard to reimagine this one. Let us know if you think any of those are good, or if you have something that you think would be better. We'd love to hear it. You can write in on the movie poster on social media. We're gonna move on to Mount Rushmore. Top four. Top four. Mount Rushmore. Top four. Mount Rushmore, top four. This week we are doing our top four of the classic Universal monsters. So, any so what ad- does that mean exactly? So any adaptation, we're going to get a little loose with it, but, you know, that would be your Frankenstein, the mummy, Dracula, oh Wolfman, Creature from the Black Lagoon, the Visible Man are the main ones you see in there. But we'll get any loose adaptations of Jordan that. Jordan looks shocked about something. We're about to get as loose as Gen Z's oh. jeans. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. Well, uh, I Jordan, apologize for that. That was dumb. Um, I won Paper, Rock, Scissors, so I get to be the person to tell you it's wh- Brendan Fraser's The pa- Mummy. Well, paper, Rock, Scissors. I need to get back to that before I... <laughs> what rock paper scissors? There we go. Sorry about that. The mummy though, great pick. The it's, mummies. It's the best like actual modern adaptation probably one and two. Well, I'll say all the way to three. Yeah, one and two. <laughs> <laughs> you really threw us there, threw us for a loop there. I feel like because during, during during the planning process, we were kind of making our picks. Like you were like, how vampire heavy are you? Oh well, why don't you tell me how vampire heavy you are? I heard that there might be a little something. That, I am. Uh, it's I'm, what we do in the shadows. Ooh. ooh. Ooh, that's a good with the movie or the the series because both are good. The movie, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll lump it all together. Lump both are some. great. I uh, just started season three. It's back and it's still funny. It's, it's still, still good. good. Yeah. I can't argue with that. I do have a couple more vampire movies on there. I will oh, sure. save for. Um, I mean, if we're getting loose, so we've got a mummy. We've got a vampire. Got Cameron, vampire. try to keep it out of those categories. Try to keep can't. it out of money vampire. I mean, if not, that's uh, fine. Well, then let me just throw away. Okay. What other mummy movie did you have? Uh, uh, Under Wraps, the Under Disney made-for-TV movie. Okay, I actually okay. love that movie. That's a high contender for okay, me. Okay, let's get yours, and then we'll go honorable mention. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I mean, if, I, if I'm trying to stay away from vampires... You don't have to. I just thought of If I'm trying to stay away from vampires, it gets rid of my interview with the vampire. It gets rid of fucking... Easy, easy. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I guess we're um, going to just do honorable mentions let, now. <laughs> you know what? I will say this. The Shape of Water, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Lagoon. it was a kind of modern I retelling of down. that. I 100% I didn't wrote have it that down. It's a great movie. Great Oscar movie. I actually like it a lot. I've been meaning to rewatch it recently. It might be one of the best love movies in in the last like five years hmm. agreed I, or 10 however long it's been out i did have that written down as honorable mention i don't think i uh, we can come up with a definitive one so let us know what you think but let's get to some honorable mentions because yeah, this one's littered let's start listening about you know it was wildly close to being on my list van helsing one. no, no not number one, but... nope nope huh. teen wolf Interesting. Fucking love Just that. Just watched that recently. on my big board. Nice. Watched it recently. It is weirder than I remember, <laughs> man. It is weird. It's got a lot going on. I always think that that would be a great Halloween costume. If Michael J. Fox? Up. Yeah. Sure is. Sexually. MJF. Amped movie. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, in the 80s. 
It's probably got some problematic. So there's um, a sneaky you, penis. You do in the get back. some movies that you get a couple of these creatures in there. You got your uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. You got your Van oh. Helsings, things like that that get some vampire. Your Harry Potter fours. Harry Potter. Yeah. Then you just got okay. I did movies. write it down I because wrote it of down. that. Well, it, it just has to be on there. Harry Potter. Th- yeah, just four, right? I think so. Yeah, four. four? Yeah. Three would be like the one with Lupin and the werewolf. Oh, then then three is what I'm. Thinking. Sorry, yeah, Harry Potter three. Technically, and the books do mention Basket the vampires Bands. though, and that does come into. That's play true. Play. Four. He's uh, got the creature, the lagoon kind of. Vibes he's, turns into a little. Oh, it's true. Uh, the gillyweed. Yeah. Uh, gilly we of weed. course have uh, Lost Boys. Or is, we go I back thought about putting episode. Lost Boys on it. Go check our episode of Lost Boys. Go That's check our episode of Saga. I gotta say nay on that. Yeah. It's not on my list, but you had to at least not bring for it up. me. But it's a it's a mention for sure. Um, There's you, obviously you classical ones like Fright Night is actually just Monster Squad. Monster, you know the ones like that. Oh, I mean, They're of course, Monster Squad that mentions all of the big monsters. So I mean, that has to be on there. Um, It'd be for, remiss to not mention we've already talked about, it, but Frank and Thumb. Um, Mom's got a date with the vampire perfect. along with Under Wraps. Love it, Under Wraps. It's not a movie, but it's practically a short. You got to count the thriller. Like, Good. just the whole Great music call. video. And then to piggyback on that, the same guy that did the effects for that, American Werewolf in Paris. I mean... What was the vampire that show? American Werewolf in London. Is that True Blood? Um, American Were- what? Um, yeah, True Blood. Oh, yeah. It was a- um, I think we already said Interview with the Vampire, but classic uh, 90s. I love- vampire with Jonathan Lipnicki. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was a 90s Cute movie. little film. Yeah, yeah, I so remember that So it sounds like one. we're... Pro we're, vampire, we're really vampire not heavy. As, not yeah. as many werewolf ones. Uh, we, I mean, uh, I do gotta say the Big most on campus. Oh yeah, Big Wolf on campus. That was like a Fox Family thing back in the day. Um, but yeah, Nito Del Toro's to, yeah. um, Wolfman. I was so amped for that. It's still a killer. It looks so killer cool. preview. Like Where? it looks like the, that werewolf. wolf. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dark shadows. Oh, we have the Underworld series, of course. That had both the werewolf and the vampire and the mixture of the two. Hotel Transylvania. Oh, yeah. I never actually did see those, though. I haven't, oh, got, I haven't seen they're any fine. of them. You know, they'll give it what you, you want. They're not as good as, like, the Leica films and all that stuff, but... Go back and see our episode of Halloween Town. That, of course, has all the Bane creatures. Um, I gotta say a shout-out, then, if we're allowing TV episodes you got to do the nosferatu are you afraid of the dark that one's like solid. also the burns is a vampire halloween episode and werewolf flanders are classic oh, burns is a vampire might be my deadly favorite you could have put i assume dracula dead and loving it is on there for dracula you dead yeah, and Love is definitely on my I'm list i do love that. that honestly i meant to say it that was going to be my number one pick but i heard no vampires and i panicked <laughs> you know, you I'm like sorry. specified that as long as it's Dracula, that literally was Dracula Dead and Lovely. No, yeah, it says as long as it's not Dracula. And it's like, well, then I'm, let me throw out some answers. Of things Shout out to Jessica Jones and the rest of the Jones family. The Halloween that almost wasn't. That's got them all. Oh, yeah, that's classic. Uh, let us know some of your favorites. But uh, thank you for listening to our take on Young Frankenstein. If you like what you heard, make sure you like and subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Uh, as always, we are just a grassroots podcast here at Cold Classics. We don't pay for advertising. Tweet at us. We, uh, DM us on Instagram. Yeah, We've got we, a couple of those we recently. We barely we tell people that. we have a podcast. So make sure if you like what you heard to recommend to friends and family. Um, you can find us at Cold Classics Pod on social media. And you can write in your movie request to Podcast at gmail.com. Do you guys want a, a teaser for next week? Sure. Audience? <laughs> Unless that's not in the first one. Bye. Bye. Bye.